Walking on that rainbow to the pot of gold yeah. The young brother always working hungry for more Ascension Attention Ascension Ascension all right, uh, welcome to Unplugged Season 2, Episode 15. It is me, Dave, the MC, and today I am joined by an artist and someone who has his own label. Um, he's based uh, currently in Dallas, correct? Dallas, Texas? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to Ochichi, the artist. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's up, man? What's good, man? How how are you? How are you doing? I know it's very early. Uh, that side we've just talked about it like just now. Um, so how how are things now that um elections are finally over? Like you know, there's a way Kenyans just look at what you guys are doing over there, and we're like, yeah. <laughs> well, for me, it was uh, well, you already know, I was rooting for Biden. You know what yeah. I mean? Uh, the, the 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 thing was uh, three days. It's like you know, it's like uh, I think when um, was it twenty sixteen where you guys had to you know in Kenya we had to wait yeah. for yeah for a long like, yeah man it was the same thing over here everybody was just on the edge. You know they they don't know who is gonna do what man I was I was up actually <laughs> waiting to hear what was going on yeah yeah but it was tense. Uh, at least it's finally over um, in terms of like the waiting, because I can imagine, um, I don't think the wait was this long in 2016, but of course, uh, this is different. More people have voted this time and yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, like um, they did it differently, but it was, it was, you know, it was long. It was super long, you know, uh, but, but then, but I think, uh, uh the the other election they announced it like on the election night yeah. but they they had to wait two days after the election night yeah yeah uh-huh. but it's but it's all cool man um so let's 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 move on to your to your career because um i was going through your bio and one of the things that i was very interested in is that the fact that you have six projects six projects in four years there's not a lot of artists even here like back here like who have that kind of discography um so let's 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 just move to the start of your career what what year did you like begin doing music professionally um professionally i'd say four years back mm. uh, I, I say four years back but uh just doing music in general mm. i'd say almost almost six mm. yes so you put so, you so know, you've put some time you put some time into into music and yeah because yes because i could see because i could see it with um with uh you know how you started was um i think you you and en- g- got your hands on uh pro tools uh at some yes. point at w- what yeah. age was that oh man i was uh I, I think i was in high school uh i i can't remember exact age um mm-hmm. uh you see my pops you know i told my pops i really like you know music yeah. and i wanted to you know and and all of a sudden it was like hey i got you a laptop with uh you know pro tools mm. in it. uh and you know it took me a week to just go through this the program uh but then i had to add on you know you, as yeah. you keep going you new plugins you know new interfaces that you need to you know and and you know he kept you know also helping me out as far you know you can go here and check this so yeah. it was a quick pro- uh, process for me, but I loved it. I think it's the passion for it, maybe. What what brought what brought about that that passion? Oh, well, I guess also I, I can give this back to my dad. You see, my dad is that uh, he used to listen to uh, 
uh, uh, LETP, uh, Okay Jazz, yeah. Franco, yeah. Um, you know, Samangwana. So, you know, like every day we listen to that. Um, and then, you know, I got, I got to like hang out with my dad a lot. So music was like the first thing I, you know, mm. react to, yeah. Okay. Um, so you ended up uh, moving to the States, uh, yes. to Dallas, where now your music career was able to uh, flourish a bit more because um, what, what I can say is uh, it's, it's, it's a bit more, is it, do you think it's a bit more easier for artists to prosper in the States as compared to in Nairobi? Like, have you had conversations with any Nairobi artists? Oh man, I say, I say, when I want to do a project, I would, I would love to be home though. If I yeah. want to do a project that I'm not handling, yeah. If I had to uh, get somebody else to to to, if I want to do a project that is going to be easier, yeah. Because the difference is this: back here, I have to pay at least maybe two hundred dollars an hour for studio time. Mm. You know what I mean? And that's uh, uh, that's that's not including what you're gonna pay the engineer, mm -hmm. and then you have your producer. So it's it's easier back at home. It's easy back at home. And when when I started, mm -hmm. when I when I got here, because of how how that was going, I felt like you know, uh, let me see if I can do this. Yeah. You know, and I already have that. You know, I already have the knowledge behind it. Yeah. So it's easy at home. All right. All right. Um because uh <laughs> what was I gonna ask? So you got there, then you got yourself started um with uh some friends, correct? That's how you ended yes. up of uh, establishing D note. Yes. Oh uh, well D note um See, when Dino started, it was just me. Mm. But then, um, uh, you know, I got, you know, I, I started, my main aim of doing music, you see, when I started doing music, I just wanted to do it because of the passion of it. Yeah, yeah. So it wasn't, for me, it wasn't like, oh, do this, do that, so or, or push it here, push it there. Mm. So when I started doing that, it's like the first year that I was here, it was kind of like I'm building off of what I'm seeing. Uh, and then the culture is different. Mm. The culture is massive, and and you you know you just trying to see where and, and see where you fit in and, and and get to be authentic while you're still doing it. Yeah. Uh, so I met a couple of friends uh, that also love music, and I think most of the time they you know they hear me listen to one of the songs that uh, they find me listen to one of the songs that I did, and yeah. and they're like, oh, who who did that for you? And I'm like. Oh yeah, yeah, it's me. You know, so through connections, uh, I, I I had to find a couple of artists that I wanted to work with. Yeah. You know, um, and then some other people behind the, the, the scene too. So. Mm. Um. Okay. Okay. So, um, just just a quick question, because because I'm 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 trying to I'm trying to like do this a, a bit off script. Uh, was Ochichi your first stage name or have you gone through the, the process of, you know, artists changing their names sometimes, like, depending on, like, your evolution, like, where you see yourself going? Uh, have you gone through that or has that always been your, your stage name? No, not really. Um, man, I started from uh, Freddie G. Mm -hmm. uh freddie g but this is way 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 back yeah freddie g um yeah i did I, I did a project uh king class uh with freddie g and actually even now i still have so many projects that i haven't done but now freddie g came from uh like my middle name yeah. because uh my middle name has fred on it so it was like okay i'm freddie g but when that when that came about uh that's when that's when like D note what kind of starting yeah uh with that project yeah. and then from freddie g um 
from Freddy G, I went to uh, I went to a Chichi. Now, mm-hmm. when I went to a Chichi, um, it was just a Chichi, and then the reason why I added uh, when the reason why the last name came about because of Chichi, there is a Nigerian um, there is a Nigerian artist also yeah. had that. Yeah. So I had to put oh, Chichi the artist uh, to to the end. Yeah. But but the way it came about is, I used to like I was kind of hyper, and I was doing a lot of things together. Mm-hmm. It mm-hmm. was like Freddie G was my finding myself moment. Yeah. Where do I fit yeah. in? Yeah. Um, and I did a couple of projects, and you know, right now you sit down and you remember. Um, you know, some of my projects, now you hear how people change them and, and yeah. make them somehow, yeah. but yeah. yeah, it's a good thing. It's like, you see how you grew, like how you grew from uh, when when you don't know nothing to somewhere you know something, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, tell me, tell me about like uh, having your own label. Is it is it really difficult? Is it is it manageable? Like, how do you... How do you deal with, you know, artists um, who, you know, they, there's those artists who are easy to work with. There are those artists who are not easy to work with. So how did how do you balance that in a label? Um, first of all, having a label in general is mm-hmm. a good thing if you're an artist. Yeah. Because you get to control things that you normally don't control. Mm. Um, starting a label is, is a little bit tricky, it's hard because, because especially when you're in a different country, yeah. because back home I can set up a business and then uh, um, just go ahead and register it on, on you know, with the, with, uh, the, the right authorities and then mm-hmm. you're good to go. But here it's different because from where you set your studio at to, to getting it licensed there's like 10, 20 process of steps that you have to go through. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, now, what I love about being, uh, having my own label is I got people that, I got people behind me, mm. you know, and I'm a producer and I get to, uh, I get to produce these songs. I get to see the birth of all the songs that we are, you know, we are involved in. Yeah. And now it gives me a humble time. I can actually make a song for like a week, the same song without worrying about, oh, I need to spend this, I need to pay this in the studio. For rookies from the ground up, the most, the mo- the hardest thing is getting the equipment. The hardest thing is about getting equipment. Uh, you get, you, you know, you get the right uh, uh, Mac or Apple or, or uh, PC. Uh, you know, and, and expensive. Right now, these things are expensive. You get all like monitors, uh, uh, your you know your scratch boards or your MPC and all that uh, to, to 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 make sure you have all the programs. And you already know if you do music, it's like they are coming with new updates, new things yeah. uh, that the people want to sound like. That you want to always sound like what people sound mm-hmm. like. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But still keep it authentic. You know yeah. what I mean? So, like every week, there's new stuff. So, you have to be just confident on what you're doing. But financial wise, it's hard. Mm. But when it comes to, uh, you know, passion and all that, it's the best way so far. And I got a lot of artists that we assign under my label. Yeah. And, uh, you know, my label actually is, 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 is comprised of three other guys, you know, I have a Congolese and, and it's so, it's so good though because yeah. um, we have a Congolese, uh, he's my brother from another mother, he's a good guy. Uh, he just handles financial. Mm-hmm. And then we have uh, Moses. Now Moses is kind of like the, uh, the director behind all, you know, uh, like the operation. You know, and then me, you already know, I'm like, I'm the top of it, but these guys, we are in like the same level. You know I mean? It makes connection easier, working at the, you know, like they don't have to go 
crazy. Yeah. I'm walking on the rainbow to the pot of gold. The young brother always working, hungry for more. Ascension. 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 